So first of all, I just want to establish something right off the bat. Even though this video is very much a personal message to Neil deGrasse Tyson, where I'm gonna be using his own words to make the case that he's already vegan in his beliefs, this video could just as well be titled, Why Any Sane and Rational Person Who Recognizes Scientific Facts Needs to Go Vegan, but I think you can see why I stuck with the original title. All right, I've been meaning to make this video for a long time now. Let's do this. Featuring Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill, 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 Bill Nye the Science Guy. Science rules. So the categories I'm going to be exploring today to make my case are Professor Tyson's own words, Star Trek slash the future is vegan, not dying, not dying via planetary suicide. Animals are basically people. I mean, look at this dog. He's shoveling the snow. What more proof do you need? Here's a sheep playing rugby, a pig eating sushi, cows chilling on a beach. This raccoon is reclining with some grapes. What about Picasso? He's a painter. I digress. Carl Sagan said so. And I know you're still only eating animals because you love the taste, but that's not a real problem because vegans eat meat. So this is actually the kickoff in a new series I'm gonna be doing, uh, reaching out to some of my favorite humans, some of the leading voices in science, politics, Hollywood, music, people who I'm not trying to disrespect, but who I'm reaching out to because I respect them. And if you have someone in mind who you think I should dedicate one of these videos to, don't forget to let me know. So first of all, why Neil? So anyone who knows me and who talks to me at a party or work or anywhere and anything even remotely connected to the universe comes up, everything is connected to the universe. We're in the universe right now. I'm like a broken record telling everyone you have to watch Cosmos. It is the greatest series I've ever seen on a TV or computer screen. It is mind expanding. In fact, if you're one of my friends watching this and you still haven't seen Cosmos, it's over. We're not friends anymore. Bye-bye. Until you watch Cosmos and then we good. So being such a big fan of Neil's work, you can imagine how happy I was to see him in his video that PETA directed. There's a famous a science fiction story, forgive me, I forgot who wrote it, called They're Made of Meat. And these were aliens who came to visit Earth, and they found humans not only being made of eat meat, but they eat other creatures on the planet. And we take that for granted, that we eat other life. But given the sun as an energy source, in principle, you could use the sun as energy. When we sort of do, that's what it means to get energy from plants. And in fact, we're all solar powered in that sense, but very indirectly so. And imagine another species that where they power their bodies from sunlight and they come and see us gnashing on each other's ribs <laughs> for food. It makes us look pretty primitive. Exactly, primitive. It's absolutely barbaric that we're still eating animals in the 21st century, you're right. So then I Googled, is Neil deGrasse Tyson vegan? And I was kind of surprised to find the answer was, no? I mean, has he hurt himself? And then I saw this. Uh, what are my thoughts on having a plant-based diet to reduce carbon footprint and, and fix global warming? That, that's what you're saying? Is that the question? Yes. Yeah, so there's no doubt about it. If we all, if everyone became vegetarian, overnight you would reduce the carbon footprint. But generally, so the biggest part of the carbon footprint is transporting food, okay? This is why you want to eat locally to minimize that if you can. Now, transportation is by far the smallest and least important part of the carbon footprint of food, but you're an astrophysicist, not an ecologist, so we'll brush that off. Go on, let's see where you're going with this. Now, I'm, as a scientist, and as a big fan of engineering solutions to problems, rather than give up my 16 ounce ribeye, what I might do instead, so what is this? You didn't hear the rest of my sentence, okay? Uh, by the way, cows don't actually exist in the wild. We invented them to turn grass into steak. <laughs> so, 
Man, I have so much respect for the professor, that was kind of embarrassing to watch. Never mind transporting the food. Animal agriculture has more of a destructive impact on the Earth's climate than all of the world's cars, trucks, planes, and ships in the world combined. It is the leading cause of direct habitat loss and the mass extinction you supposedly were trying to warn us about in multiple episodes of Cosmos. It is the leading cause of ocean dead zones. It is the number one source of water consumption and water contamination. The most dangerous breeding ground for the next global pandemic. Swine flu, bird flu ring a bell. And I could keep going. Just to give you a glimpse of how this issue dwarfs transportation. Eating entirely local grown food for an entire year would say the greenhouse gas equivalent of not driving about a thousand miles. Substituting a dead cow burger for a delicious plant-based burger, just one meal per week, would save the equivalent of not driving 1,160 miles. Can you imagine what kind of difference that makes over an entire year? And I think you should especially take note of that because you fly so much, which is unavoidable and understandable with your job, but you have no viable alternative to get to an event or a film shoot in London or Hong Kong in a reasonable amount of time other than an airplane. You have an obvious alternative right in front of you in the form of dozens of delicious vegan meat options when it comes to what's for lunch. I mean, if you put the environmental stats of a plant-based burger up against a dead cow burger, it's ridiculous. It looks something like this. Now, a lot of people hear that and they think, oh, okay, well, I'll just reduce my consumption of animals. And reducing is better than nothing, but would you say it's okay to pay someone to stab dogs to death just three times a week? I mean, it's better than nine times a week, right? Yeah, but you could just stop stabbing animals to death. And your own body will thank you for that too, as I'm about to explain in the whole not dying section. Now at the event, he goes on to say that as a scientist, he's a fan of engineering solutions to problems, like inventing a machine to remove CO2 from the atmosphere, which is weird because such a machine already exists. It's called a tree, but we won't be able to reforest the planet anytime soon when we're so busy deforesting it at an apocalyptic rate with the consumption of cow flesh or steak, if you want to call it that, being the number one reason for that. Meanwhile, if we want to evolve from eating like barbaric cavemen, as you more or less described it, to eating like the animal lovers that we all claim to be, it would free up 75% of all the farmland currently being taken up by humans to be able to regenerate into nature. That's equivalent to the land area of the United States, China, the European Union, and the continent of Australia combined. And all of that could regrow into vibrant forests, savannas, wetlands, removing enormous amounts of CO2 as it does, and it would create massive new habitats for endangered species to come back from the brink of extinction. Now that's a viable solution to climate change that we can implement immediately, unlike renewable energy and electric cars, which will take decades to fully bring online. In fact, that may be our only hope now that we're way past the safe levels of CO2 in the atmosphere, and it's something people can do right now, unlike your proposed solution. So, uh, I'm a fan of solutions to problems, more than I'm a fan of saying, oh my gosh, it's a problem, it's, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you know, I, I want to sit down and say, how do I solve that? How do I solve, and by the way, let me, to, to at least throw a bone back in your direction. Until that happens, we need to do something serious. Like, like, work on convincing people in charge that global warming is real in the first place. <laughs> right, so you're gonna convince this guy to start accepting science at the age of 72 that guy. Seriously, he is tragically in charge of NASA and the US military right now, but both NASA and the US military have been loudly sounding the alarm about climate change for years now. There's been over 24,000 peer-reviewed studies proving that burning billions of tons of greenhouse gases increases the greenhouse effect. What do you need, 25,000 studies? Oh yeah, that'll get through to him. Einstein once said, that the definition of insanity 
is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Neil, I know this is frustrating for people like us who love and who live for the quest for knowledge, but some people just don't care about the truth. And we're stuck with him, or Mike Pence, until January 20th, 2021. We've supposedly got 12 years left to turn the tide, I think that's generous, and the next two years are already basically up in flames like California, as far as convincing the people in power goes. Neil, you're the one who's always saying we should drop everything and deal with the climate emergency right now, and I obviously agree with you, but you're not willing to drop that cancerous corpse of a brutally abused cow when that is by far the biggest action that you or anyone can take to combat the climate crisis? That'd be like driving around in an 18-wheeler truck fueled exclusively with oil from that giant tumor in the earth that is Canada's tar sands while yelling out the window, hey everyone, stop polluting the atmosphere, go green, drive electric. That just makes no fucking sense. I mean, it's just bullshit. Fuck. Oh my, my. But hey, it's been a while since he first said that, so let me give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe someone schooled him since then. And then I saw this. I've still been so excited to do this video, uh, and it's no coincidence that I chose to put scientists first in the series because there's something I love about scientists who respect the method, and that is in a nutshell that you don't make shit up. Science is not a belief system. It's simply a process to try and make sure that we know what the fuck we're talking about whenever we open our mouths. It's just a method to try and observe and obtain information about the universe around us and inside of us accurately. And if you do root your opinions in reality, you can't just go around saying things like, oh well, my God told me to slit animals' throats and then burn their bodies in sacrifice because he likes the smell. So I gotta do it. The boogeyman said so. What? You heard voices in your head telling you to do what now? Now, first of all, Neil, I think I know you well enough from having watched Cosmos three times and having watched numerous mind-expanding interviews with you to have an idea of what you may be thinking right now, which is probably like, mm, this guy's probably right. My vegan friends have told me all these things already. Even Bill is saying the future is vegan, but meat tastes good. Steak tastes good. Bacon tastes good. And you know what? I'm probably gonna get in trouble with the vegan police for saying this, but it definitely does. When you season it with the right spices and sauces, most of which are already vegan FYI, it's straight up delicious. Well, thank dog that we live in a time in history where you can keep eating meat without eating animals. Wait, what did you just say? I'm saying, I don't know how to put this. Oh. Vegans eat meat. Uh -huh. Especially here in NYC. This city is decked out with some of the most fantastic vegan burgers, pizza, deliciousness in the world. In fact, if you want, I'll even take you out for a few. In fact, if you want, I could even bring them up to the planetarium on your lunch break. I think that's the Empire State Building here. So, for up there somewhere, man, I could be in Manhattan in a flash. Okay, maybe give me like six, seven hours? I, I gotta stop and get the burgers too. In fact, I work just a few subway stops down from you. What do you need? An engraved invitation? Now, is this a thinly veiled excuse to hang out with Neil deGrasse Tyson, nerd out about the universe, and discuss the fact that back in December, the US military released evidence that concluded, through the observation, scientific methodologies that were applied to, to look at this phenomena, that these aircraft, we'll call them aircraft, are displaying characteristics that are not currently within the U.S. inventory, nor in any foreign inventory that, that we are aware of. So I know you're using, uh, you're being clear, but I mean, the answer is yes. Um, my personal, I can't speak on behalf of the government, obviously, okay. I'm, I'm not in the U.S. government anymore. My personal belief is that uh, there is very compelling evidence that we, uh, we may not be alone, whatever that means. Yes, yes, it is an excuse to do just that. 
But there's bacon cheeseburgers in it for you and for you, Bill Nye. You're the fucking best. You, along with my dad and David Suzuki, helped spark my love for science as a kid. And since then, I've been able to share the outcomes of that curiosity and that love for knowledge with millions of people. So I owe you a hell of a lot. So let's eat, man. Let's chat. Now, one little asterisk I need to tell you about vegan meat. As a meat lover myself, I'll be honest. Are burgers equal or better than cow burgers? Are sausages equal or better than cow or pig sausages? Vegan chicken? Don't believe me. They gave blind taste tests to non-vegans, people who regularly eat actual birds, and they can't even tell the difference. Vegan bacon? It's good. We've got something like 17 different kinds of cruelty-free bacon, and a lot of them are amazing, but none of them taste exactly like a pig's ass, which is what normal bacon is made out of. Maybe in a year or two we'll get the recipe down for that too, it's just a matter of time. But if you're gonna say, well, oh, 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 no, he almost had me, but even he just said, vegan bacon doesn't taste exactly like a pig's ass, so can't go vegan. Sorry, animals. What you're essentially saying at that point is I will torture an innocent animal to death just for a slightly different flavor in my mouth for a few seconds or a few minutes, depending on how often one eats a pig's ass. And if you still think, oh no, I, I shop at Whole Foods, the pigs I ate weren't tortured. They lived long, happy lives before they magically went to sleep and their severed body parts flew into my plate. And you think there's such a thing as humane slaughter? I challenge you to watch the documentary Dominion and face the facts. That was filmed in a first world country with all kinds of supposed laws about the humane treatment of animals. Why don't you go see what humane looks like in real life? 17 different kinds of cruelty-free bacon in the world, but I'm on number 18. The kind that comes from a dead animal, because the specific sensation in my taste buds is more important to me than the life of a fully sentient, highly intelligent animal. More intelligent than dogs, in fact, and I know you cherish both dogs and intelligence. But hey, it's just a pig, right? The fact that someone can find himself in the position of saying, it's just a dog, harps back to me hearing people say, oh, it's just a, you know, put your nationality there, or put your religion there, or put whatever, it's just that, and people justifying uh, wanton slaughter. That's the basis of the whole name the trait challenge that my friends Ask Yourself and Vegan Gains have been doing such a good job spreading and absolutely destroying, like Eminem level savaging any debate challengers over. And I guarantee you there's nothing that anyone can come up with that gives you a logical or in any way morally defensible reason to discriminate against an animal purely on the basis of being a different species. Go ahead and try. Like you said. There was a day when it was surely ethical to beat your slaves. First to have slaves in the first place and then beat them if they didn't obey your commands. Why? Because they were less than human. And in our constitution they were three-fifths human, you know, even down to mathematical fractions. So, so ethics can and does evolve as a, as a means of thinking about how to treat others. And that reminds me of something your mentor the original creator of Cosmos, Carl Sagan, who was born right here in Brooklyn over, over there somewhere once said, which is that a sharp distinction between humans and animals is essential if we are to bend them to our will, make them work for us, wear them, eat them without any disquieting tinges of guilt or regret. It is unseemly of us, who often behave so unfeeling toward other animals, to contend that only humans can suffer. The behavior of other animals renders such pretensions specious. They are just too much like us. Now, as far as we know, although he was sympathetic to animal rights, Carl Sagan wasn't vegan or vegetarian in his lifetime. Although to be fair, he passed away before his hypothesis about animal sentience had become so conclusively proven true by a total consensus of neuroscientists. And before plant-based meats, cheeses, desserts, and other alternatives to animal consumption found their way into pretty much every supermarket and fast food joint. To the point that you can now actually go vegan without even really changing what you eat just changing the ingredients in your meat. Well, we're here in the 21st century now, Neil. So what's your excuse? Yeah, no, you got nothing. To discriminate purely on the basis of species is no different than us saying, hey man, let's be honest. Yo, we're both dudes here, man. Bros over hoes, right? Or us saying, hey man, you're from the US. 
I'm from Canada originally, but one thing we can both agree on is that Yeah, North America is the only continent that matters. Fuck all you other continents. Slide into the ocean, bitches! That is a subjective basis for moral discrimination. That is a human supremacist mentality. It is not consistent with any kind of sound morals, as some of humanity's greatest visionaries like Albert Einstein, Plato, Nikola Tesla, and Leo Tolstoy recognized way ahead of their times. And Leonardo da Vinci once said that the time will come when men such as I will look upon the murder of animals as they now look upon the murder of men. That time is now, Neil. But speaking of the future, Lieutenant Yar was confused. We no longer enslave animals for food purposes. But we have seen humans eat meat. You've seen something as fresh and tasty as meat, but inorganically materialized out of patterns used by our transporters. Well, I pretty much rest my case on this one. Gene Roddenberry is a genius, and even NASA has got his back on this one. Yeah, I can confidently say that based on where we are in terms of this escalating mass extinction, either the future will be vegan, renewable, and electric, or there pretty much won't be a future, at least one any of us would want to live in. It's almost like the force is pulling us in that direction if we actually want to survive on this planet. Or as strong as that thing you kept talking about when you were so satisfyingly roasting those flat earthers. What's it called again? This is called gravity. And that connects us to our next category, not dying, but rather living long and prospering. So, Bill Nye, you ready to beam yourself to the future yet? Uh, to get all the way down to a plant-based diet uh, might be tricky for a lot of people. However, it seems like a good idea. Check in with me in a few months because I noticed that my diet is becoming increasingly vegetarian. And so the next little while, I may be all the way over. What up? <laughs> hey, Bill Nye. It's been a few months, so I'm checking up on you. Next time you come to the planetarium to visit Neil, you want sweet potato fries with that Beyond Burger or regular fries? It's funny, Bill. We've never actually met in real life, but I don't know if you noticed, but we're actually on the same rap album together. Yeah, that's right. It's Bill Nye the Science Guy's hip hop debut on the Bubba Brinkman album, The Rap God to Climate Chaos. We may not be on the same track as each other, Bill, but we're on the same motherfucking team. But seriously, what does the science really say about how to live long and prosper? For humans who choose a plant-based rather than a corpse-based diet, all-cause mortality down, multiple kinds of cancer risk down, diabetes risk down, heart disease, possibly completely preventable, and in early stages, even curable on a whole foods plant-based diet, as plants contain a grand total of zero cholesterol. Major potential weight loss benefits. Now pause on that last weight loss point. I remember seeing an interview with you once uh, from kids, I believe, and one of the questions was, what's the most embarrassing thing you've ever had to do? And you mentioned how during the filming of Cosmos, you would put on a few pounds after the holidays or whatever. So for the shooting of one of the episodes, you had to actually wear Spanx to keep your tummy in or something like that. Now, first of all, I don't think that was necessary. I don't think anyone watching Cosmos was like, you know what? All this talk of hypernovas is blowing my mind, but uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Neil looks like he put on a few pounds between this and the last episode. Man, fuck this, I'm out of here. But if weight loss does matter to you, and of course, being lean is important for general health and longevity in life. Eating a plant-based diet is one of the best ways to lose weight. And the reason for that is simple science. Plants are generally mostly water weight. They have little to no fat. That water is heavy and it fills up your stomach, but the water contains zero calories. It just hydrates you. Everybody wins. Better blood circulation. Circulation of what some doctors are calling superior vegan blood. Partly for the reason that plant-based foods are loaded with anti-cancerous and anti-aging antioxidants, which do not exist in animal flesh. I could keep going, but uh... No, for real. Speaking for myself, Neil, and probably for everyone who is a fan of your work, we want you to stick around. Uh, even though we're super hyped for season two of Cosmos to drop next year, based around possible other worlds, we're even more excited for you to do season three someday. A 
about newly discovered planets that we might see through the eyes of the James Webb Space Telescope, about life underwater in the oceans of Europa, a radio signal we may finally pick up from another civilization, or we somehow find the origin planet or planets of those aircraft, or I guess you should call them spacecraft, that have already been visiting this Earth. Either way, Neil, we want you to stick around well into the 22nd century. So eat your damn vegetables. In burger form. So to Neil and to Bill, I truly hope you see this. I apologize if anything I say sounded harsh. I'm just using skills that you helped me develop to question everything and to always look to facts and evidence instead of assumptions. And most of our society assumes it's normal and it's fair to eat animals. But I think we're at a junction point in our evolution as a human culture where that is changing rapidly. And as someone who's in a position that both of you men are in, this is all a million times more true for you than it is for the average person because you are leaders, because you have a voice and a perspective that millions of people listen to and look to for inspiration and for information and guidance in many respects. So please choose to be a leader rather than a straggler on this issue. The average person eats between one to 200 animals a year. And with your words reaching millions of people in the average week, your words could help prevent an incomprehensible amount of suffering, an incomprehensible amount of destruction of irreplaceable wilderness by joining the feet gang and keep eating meat, stop eating animals. Fry sold separately. If you're watching this and you want to help bring some of the hundreds of scripts, songs, and ideas that I have for comedy videos uh, into fruition, check out the community on Patreon and these are some of the shirts that you can get as a reward for your support and just to look super fly all the time. And if you're watching this and your name is not Neil deGrasse Tyson or Bill Nye, but you agree it's time for them to come to the future and stop eating like cavemen, do me a favor and open up a new tab while you listen to this and share this video with them over your favorite social media, whatever that is. Live long and prosper, y'all. Ethics evolves as we come to learn about the natural world and our relationship to it. And I'd like to think that it's evolving in, a, in, in the right direction in the sense that we are not apart from, but we're participants in a great unfolding cosmic story. And that I see that not simply as the consequence of an ethical perspective. I come to it from a cosmic perspective. When I look at the commonality of the chemistry of life and the chemistry of the universe and the origin of our elements traceable to the universe, and there's a connectivity there that gives me a sense of participation and belonging to the universe, not a sense of being apart from it and where it's my duty to lord over it. All of this matters, I think.